All right. Well, how you doing? Thanks for coming out on Memorial Day weekend. Uh, lots of other things you could be doing, but we're going to have fun tonight. Um, how many of you brought a Bible? I see a few of them. If you've got a Bible, I might ask you to read if you're okay with that. Uh, because we're looking at Job, obviously we can't read the whole thing, but because it's 42 chapters, but we want to look at bits and pieces. Oh, there are Bibles here. Yeah, okay. Good. So a little bit about why I wanted to talk about Job tonight. Um, I have a good friend. In fact, he's probably, uh, he, just, he just passed away last week, actually. Probably the, the, the closest friend I've ever had that's died so far, and I guess the older I get, the more likely that will start to happen, hopefully. Um, and his, his wife was a colleague of mine when I was on staff at, at Calvary. And through her, we became friends and did a lot of things as couples, um, went on a cruise together, uh, went on vacation, went to London for a week and did, did a bunch of things. We became very, very close. And um, he, he got... 13 years ago, came down with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a kind of cancer. And as part of the treatment of that, he got another kind of cancer, a type of leukemia. And so um, 13 years of his life was battling these two cancers. And at some of that time, both of them went, were in remission. And other times, one would flare up, and then towards the end, the, lymph the leukemia flared up, and that's what eventually took him. Um, and so, you know, the, the whole journey and how it ended and his, his struggle with disease and so forth um, made me go back and relook at Job, because Job is all about suffering and all of the questions that come when you're faced with it or when you're around somebody else who's suffering. Um, so I want you to kind of think, you know, the couple of the themes that we want to talk about when you get in your discussion groups um, is how can you be a true friend to somebody who's suffering? I mean, how, what's the right way to be around as a Christian presence to someone you're close to who may really be going through difficulty, whatever it might be. Uh, and then what's the right attitude if, if you yourself face some kind of suffering? I'm not sure that I've ever faced anything anywhere near cancer like my friend Preston faced. Um, I think the kinds of suffering I've gone through are um, pretty minimal compared to some people. Um, Job, we don't know who wrote Job. We don't know when it was written. We're not really sure if Job himself was an Israelite. Some have said it's a very ancient book. Uh, others have said, well, maybe it wasn't so old. Um, some have thought that this is a fictitious, Job was a fictitious person created to tell the story, to illustrate um, these questions. Um, but whatever, um, it's a unique book. There's really nothing else like it in the Bible. There were some other writings in the ancient world that asked the similar questions, but none quite like the book of Job. The whole thing is a long poem except for the first couple chapters and the last chapter, which we would say is an epilogue, I mean a prologue at the beginning and an epilogue. 
And the book itself um, is structured. I should have handed this out, but if you want to write this down, you can. If not, you can just listen. Um, so you have this prologue where the story of Job and what happens to it, him is set up. Uh, and then it moves into the poetic section where you have three rounds of dialogue. Now Job has these three friends uh, that come and, and hang out with him. And so there are three, each, each of the friends has a turn at addressing Job and then Job responds to that friend. And that those round of three friends, dialogue, um, friend, Job, friend, Job, friend, Job. That happens three times. Uh, so the first round goes up through chapter 11. Um, the second round is chapters 15 to 21. The third round is 22 to 26. And then you have um, this interlude, which there's sort of a pause and, and kind of a text on wisdom and how, how you get wisdom and so forth. Um, and then, then after Job's three friends are out of, out of the picture, uh, Job is fed up with them and they're fed up with him. Uh, and then in chapter, then it moves to, instead of a dialogue, a monologue. And so uh, in 29 through 31, Job has his say. Uh, and then in 32 to 37, we get a new character named Elihu, who comes out of the woodwork and uh, purports to come and shed some new light on the situation. And he says, well, I'm a younger guy than the three friends, so I waited for them to finish, um, but I'm going to set everyone straight. And so he has his say. And then finally in chapter 38, God has his say. After all this dialogue and all the monologues, finally in chapter 38 through 42, 6, uh, God says, all right, everybody, quiet, I'm going to talk. And then after God has his say, we have the epilogue, and we find out what finally happens to Job. So love to be able to just, if we had a long time, to sit down and read through all of this because it is wonderful and fascinating. There's so many little layers and sub questions and issues to be dealt with, but we're just going to scratch the surface of those and focus on the main question. Um, and the heart, the heart of uh, the book is, is why there, there's several questions that are central. One is why, why suffering in the first place? Uh, why do people suffer at all? And then related to that are why do good people sometimes suffer more than evil people? And there are other places in the Psalms where the psalmist kind of expresses some depression and says, I look around me and all these wicked people are doing just fine. And us righteous, us believers, we're... we're persecuted. We got bad things happening. Why is that? Shouldn't the righteous be rewarded and delivered from suffering and the wicked? Well, it doesn't work that way all the time. And so Job wants to answer that question. Um, and the third question, which really is even deeper than the other two, um, is where is God in all of this? Uh, sometimes suffering things that people suffer seem so pointless. Um, and, and, you know, with my friend Preston, I said, well, I know the Lord has taught him a lot through having cancer, um, but couldn't he have taught him that in two to three weeks and not 13 years? And instead of having him kind of waste away, you know, so there's that issue. Um, and then finally, um, when we suffer, what is our, how should we respond and seek out God? Uh, what should our attitude, if you will, uh, approach to God be? And we'll see that 
Job kind of runs the gamut from depression to blame to uh, protest and so forth throughout his dialogues. Um, so what I want to do is read, read the prologue because this, it's fairly short um, <clears throat> and this sets the story up and it's a fascinating uh, story. So let me just relax and, and enjoy as I read this. In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. The man, this man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys, and a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the peoples of the East. His sons used to take turns holding feasts in their homes, and they would invite their three sisters and eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting had run its, run its course, uh, Job, would send, Job would send and have them purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. One day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There's no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You bless the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and surely he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, everything he has is in your hands, but on the man himself do not lay a hand. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. One day, when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were graze grazing nearby, and the Sabians attacked and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the fire of God fell from the sky and burned up the sheep and the servants. I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. Wow, can it get any worse? Yes, it does. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the older brother's house <coughs> when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them, and they are dead. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. At this job, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the Lord, may the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with any wrongdoing. Well, that was a bad day, wasn't it? Let's see what happens next. On another day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. <clears throat> 